Hey, Dr. White here. Today we're going to be going over some uh, more stoichiometry problems. Uh, these problems are from a worksheet. You can uh, download that worksheet if you click on the link in the description. Uh, today we're going to be focusing on percent yield problems. Okay, so uh, let's get going. First problem. Uh, usually we have uh, to solve word problems, right? Determine the mass of carbon dioxide that should be produced in the reaction between 3.74 grams of carbon and excess oxygen. What is the percent yield of CO2? So let's go ahead. Remember, step, step one, always, always, always get your balanced chemical equations, okay? So uh, mass of carbon dioxide that should be produced, okay? So carbon dioxide, that's going to be my product. We'll put it on the right. Okay, um, producing a reaction between carbon, that's good old C, and an excess of oxygen, that is O2. Okay, and it looks like we are balanced, that's great. Now remember, step two, get your before change and after table set up so you know what you're trying to find what information you actually have, right? So, um, looks like we're talking about, um, the question is, after the reaction, that's our X, right? What is the, wh how much CO2 uh, is recovered, okay? So let's go ahead and figure out X. This, by the way, is called the theoretical yield, and that'll become important here in a second, okay? Now, before you put stuff into the BCA chart, you're going to have to turn it into moles. They're giving us information, but it's in grams. Okay, 3.74 grams of carbon. How many moles of carbon is that? Let's go ahead and just figure that out real quick. Well, if so the question is 3.74 grams of carbon. How many moles of carbon is that? Okay. Well, we don't... We, just using this equation, we can't find that out. But we do know that there's 12 grams of carbon in one mole of carbon. Okay? So what we can actually do is just take away those equal signs, draw in one equal sign, okay? And then solve for x. x is going to be equal... 2.31 moles. Okay, and that is what, that's the number that we're going to put into our before part before our reaction happens. We've got 0 0.31 moles of carbon. Okay, now it says we got excess O2, and all that really means is that we don't really need to worry about O2. So let's just put a line in here. Okay, so um, if we fully react the 0.374 grams or, or 0.31 moles of carbon, at the end, we're not going to have any carbon left, right? How much CO2 are we going to make, though? Well, initially, we don't have any CO2, but if I look at my ratio here, there's one C, and I'm going to make one CO2. So if I react 0.31 moles of C, I'm going to make 0.31 moles of CO2. So in the end, I'm going to have 0.31 moles, right? But to get the true theoretical yield, we're going to need to find it in grams, right? So let's go ahead and do our uh, relationship again to figure out how many grams of CO2 is this. And it's the same thing. I'm just going to do the same thing here. 0.31 moles of CO2 is equal to how many grams of CO2. Okay, I can't solve that by, by itself, but I can write in my other relationship that I know. It's one mole of CO2. If I look up in my periodic table and add up all the molar masses, is 44 grams of CO2, okay? Now just put in your lines, get rid of your equal signs, put in one equal sign, and then solve for 
x. And lo and behold, x is equal to 0.36 grams of CO2 produced. Okay? 13.6. Okay? So this is my theoretical yield. It's if in a perfect world I reacted 0.31 moles of carbon, I'm going to make 13.6 grams of carbon dioxide. The problem is, in the real world, you're never going to get 100% of what you think you're going to get. The question is, what is the percent yield if 11.34 grams of CO2 is recovered? If you want to find the percent yield, you need to take the actual yield, put it over the theoretical yield, and then multiply by 100%. So let's go ahead and just plug into this one. My actual yield, which is what they give me in the problem, is 11.34 grams. My theoretical yield is 13.6 grams. In the end, I'm getting 83% yield. Okay, let's do one more problem just to make sure we got the, uh, the hang of this. Uh, in the reaction between K and O2, potassium oxide is formed. Let's go ahead and just step one. Let's write down that balanced chemical equation. B, C, balanced chemical equation. Uh, K plus O2 is going to react to form potassium oxide. Remember, potassium's got a plus one charge. Oxide's minus 2, so the actual formula is going to be K2O. Okay? Now let's go ahead and do our before change and after chart. Okay? Uh, they give us uh, excess K, so we can just put lines through here. And then it's 4.28 grams of oxygen. But remember, we got to turn this into moles. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. Okay, so um, how many moles is in 4.28 grams of oxygen? Well, we've got to set up our second equation, right? In one mole, there is 32 grams of oxygen. I got that from the molar masses in the periodic table. Put in our equal sign. X is going to be equal to 4.28 divided by 32.13 moles of O2. So in this problem, let's get rid of my grams here. That doesn't help us out. Before, I have 0.13 moles of O2. Okay. Now let's assume that uh, all of the oxygen gets used up. In the end, I'm left with no oxygen, but I'm going to need some K2O. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, you probably have caught this already. Dr. White, you forgot to do something. You forgot to balance the equation. So let's go ahead and uh, balance it real quick. I've got one oxygen over here, two here, so I'm going to put a two there. Now my oxygens are okay, but I've got four Ks, so there's my balanced equation. So in the end, for every one oxygen, I'm going to make two potassium oxides. So let's keep that in mind. If I react 0.13 moles of oxygen, I'm going to make 0.26 moles of K2O, right? Because this is twice that, right? Two and one. So in the end, I'm going to have 0.26 moles of K2O. Now, if we want the theoretical yield, remember the theoretical yield has to be in grams. How many grams is that? Well, if you want to go from moles to grams, we just have to do our set up our two equations to figure it out. So, 0.26 moles K2O is equal to how many grams of K2O? To figure this out, 
I need to know that in one mole of K2O, if I add up the um, masses from the periodic table, so each K is 39, so that's 2 times 39 plus 16. Mathematician, here we go, that's what, 78, 94? So in one mole of K2O, there's 94 grams of K2O. Okay, let's make our equation here. So in the end, x will be equal to a little cross multiplication here, 24 grams. So in the end, I'm going to make 24 grams of K2O. That's my theoretical yield. Now, if we actually produce 17.36 grams of K2O, what's the percent yield? Well, percent yield equals actual yield over theoretical times 100. Just plug it in. Actual is 17.36 grams divided by 24 grams. Oh, don't forget to multiply by 100 here. Theoretical yield is 72%. Okay? So um, let's just go over the steps real quick, um, just so we can remind ourselves. Step one is you need a balanced chemical equation. In this example, Dr. White uh, forgot to do that. Step two is get your BCA down, make sure you're in moles, and then in the end, you need to take it back to grams if you want to figure out what your uh, theoretical yield is, and then just divide. Step four is divide your actual by your theoretical. And I, we always have to give you the actual amount in the problem. Okay, hope this helps. Thanks a lot.